if you've got this vision gifted on your heart, you are also gifted the resourcefulness to figure it out, but you have to continuously get out of your own damn way. And one of the ways that we're in our way is we're just wanting to get there more quickly. We're not giving ourselves the time. Welcome, Keisha, to the show. So you have created so much success in multiple businesses, and I'm so excited to dive in deep into all the different businesses you have going on. But I want to like focus on like building a community today because I yeah. think people, they really make it complicated and you have made it look really easy. But first, I want to hear more about your story. Did you always think you were going to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, Kayla, I'm so excited to be here. This is gonna be so fun. So I think a lot of your listeners will resonate with, I did the thing that I thought that I was supposed to do. And then when Mm -hmm. I got there, I looked around and I was like, holy crap, this is not what I want, but I didn't know what it was that I wanted. So I kind of shoved down this uncomfortable feeling that was telling me that I wanted more alignment and I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but because we become a byproduct of the expectations of our peer group. It was like at the time, my girlfriends from college and my now husband, like they were all like, Keisha, this is just what we do. Like you climb the corporate ladder, you kind of like count down the days till Friday. And there's nothing wrong with that if it feels aligned for you. But for me, I knew that it wasn't. And you can only shove it down for so long. And then it just kind of, for me, word vomits into me, ugly crying on my bathroom floor, feeling like there's something wrong with me. So my first business I started in January of 2014, which was in network marketing, which was kind of like my gateway into entrepreneurship. And once I started to really like build up confidence, then I expanded even like my perspective on like, what else could I do? And then I felt that feeling again, a couple years into that business where I was like, there's something else that's like, more aligned for me, but I don't know exactly what it is. So I started my podcast empower her at the end of 2018, which is where I really focused on like building this, like come with me, let's figure out life together type of community. And I figured if I cultivate the community and really get to know like what problems my community has that I would be most excited to solve, then I could create a business from the community. So I actually did it kind of backwards from a lot, what a lot of people do, where sometimes people create products, programs, services behind closed doors, and then they launch it. I was like, let me just see like who these people are and what they want. And then I'll just go create that. So that turned into programs and retreats and events and masterminds turned into a speaking career for me. And now fast forward, it also turned into my husband and I doing real estate. So I do like a lot of things and that keeps me really excited. And it's been such a journey of literally just like listening to my own intuition. And even when things on paper make sense or by other people's standards, they might be great. I'm still just listening to that intuitive nudge. That's like, no, no, no this is not aligned for you, make a pivot. And so I've just been like pivoting all over the place and squirreling a little bit, but here we are. It's, and it's worked out great. <laughs> yeah. I cannot believe that we have not known each other because our stories are very similar. Yeah. I, I got started in network marketing in 2011. Around the time you were getting started in network marketing was when I was pivoting out of it. But it's interesting how network marketing is a springboard for so many of the greats, I think, personally. Yeah. I mean, I know me and you are great. And there's a lot of people <laughs> listening in right now that, you know, I, and I've seen it with like previous clients and ongoing clients I have right now. They're like, okay, I made money in network marketing. I love it. I have this awesome community, but I feel like I'm stuck in a box. Yeah. And you know, it, it's like people like you that really go and give that inspiration and that hope to people that, okay, there is, it's okay. Like, cause I feel like, I don't know if you experienced this in network marketing, but I'm going to use the term brainwashing. And I know some of you are going to be like, oh my gosh, Kayla, it's not brainwashing, but, yeah. but it really feels like that. Cause you're just told like, this is it, like this yes. is your lifeline. And so then when you decide to start the podcast, to start the coaching program, to do something else, it's kind of like everybody in that community is going, what are you doing? Like yeah. distraction, shiny object syndrome, what's wrong with you? And you're like, nothing's wrong with me. I just, I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, did you experience that at all? Well, I think also the, the guilt aspect of it comes up for some people when, you know, you're getting to, in my situation, it's like, I was making a few hundred thousand dollars a year. I was getting to speak on, you know, stages of like thousands of people. So outwardly looking in, 
it's almost like the journey with network marketing was aspirational for people within my organization, but also within the company. And so like this like thought comes up of like, oh, am I supposed to continue doing this because this is the way that I'm supposed to inspire people? But when you're really unapologetic about like, this was great for a season, which is why I'm such an advocate of like, I love it. Like the way that you're describing it is an amazing gateway into entrepreneurship for people. Some people just love it as a side thing, but I do think there are a lot of people that know intuitively, like I want to do something really impactful and the parameters of someone telling you when you can and can't do something. And honestly, the fear that I had is once we started to make a pretty significant amount of money with network marketing, I was like, wait, I don't own this myself. Right. What if they shut off this, like, the money and then what are we going to do? So it was almost like a security aspect of it too. And I think it is really important to talk about like the, you know, wanting to diversify your income, but also even just understanding that like the guilt that comes up, like that's a story that's like, we need to squash that story. But I think a lot of women stay stuck in particular because they're like, Oh, what is this person going to think of me? Or like these people pleasing tendencies, thinking that they owe it to someone because they've done it for X amount of years or like the sunk cost fallacy of like, I've spent so much time investing in this. How could I step away and go do something else? And it's like, well, if you're gifted the vision, I think you're also gifted the resourcefulness to figure out any how along the way. It's just, you have to be willing to call your shot and be like, I'm going to deal with the repercussions of this because I would rather have the problem of navigating people's feedback on me making that transition than the problem of a coulda, woulda, shoulda or uh -huh. resentment or like the, the fear of it all going away and then being like, shit, what do I do now? Right. Right. Oh my gosh. I love the way that you put that. You'd rather navigate the problem of, you know, people's feedback of you yeah. doing something different than have a regret at the end of your life. Right. And yeah. I think it's, we can say these things, but people want to hear the practicality. Okay. So right. how did you do it? Like, did you have a conversation with your team? Did you, you know, have a conversation with corporate that you're going to do something different? What did that look like? Yeah. So I'm actually a huge proponent of building something on the side while doing the main thing, because a lot of people talk about like burn the boats and like jump and the net will appear. And I think that works for some people. And me personally, I'm actually really comfortable with risk, but I think a majority of people aren't. And so I like to talk about it from the practical standpoint of like, I had this idea of, I want to do something else. I don't know exactly what that thing is but this is producing a lot of income and it was producing fulfillment. And I liked the impact that I was making, but I knew it wasn't aligned. As soon as I felt that feeling, I was like, what can I start on the side? So I can start to build up something that then I can kind of pivot where it felt as if like I had a foot on two different paddle boards in the middle of the ocean. And then eventually I had to just take my foot off of the network marketing paddle board and put it onto this new thing and kind of go in. But I built up the community around my podcast for an entire year while still doing network marketing with the intention to kind of build a personal brand outside of what I was already known for and really like not cater that towards network marketers so that I could have this avenue to really like step away. So I was actually doing both at the same time, having to be really straightforward, like clarifying, like, this is for anyone. This is not for network marketers. If you're in this business, this is for you. Having to really just call it out as I was going through it. And then I just had a raw conversation with my team. And I actually was surprised because you know, sometimes when you're waiting to have a conversation about anything for someone listening into this, maybe it's like in the corporate world or with your significant other or with your team in this case, talking about network marketing, you build it up in your head and you like start to play out this like hypothetical situation of like, what if this happens? What if that happens? But my feed, the feedback that I got was like, of course you want to go do something else. That's super inspirational to us. Like I got a lot of positive feedback Aww. from my organization about it. And I just wanted to show them like, I mean, our days are numbered here and we don't know the count. And I've lost two friends back at age 30. And then my husband lost his dad last year. So I just always like have that fragility of life in the forefront of my mind. And I'm always reminding people like, just because you've done it for this long, like if it's not aligned for you, like you literally have one shot at this. So I'm going to go build this other thing that I'm really excited about. I hope that can be inspirational to you. And if not, then I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I'm going to go do it anyway. And I think we just need to be really unapologetic about it. If our life is going to be a testimony of what's possible for other people, if you're gifted that vision, you need to go be that example because somebody needs to see it. Otherwise you're just like, trying to keep yourself small and like water down your personality and your ambition and all the things that you want to do because of fear of other people's judgment. 
And then you resent that you lived your life in accordance to other people's expectations anyway. Right. You know, I get, I get fired up about this because I do think that's what holds us back is like, so often it's like, well, what is, you know, what is Sarah going to say about this? What's my aunt Susan going to say? I'm like, aunt Susan, I can love you, but I don't want to trade places with you. Right. So I want to go do my thing, you know? So I think it's so awesome that you have this mindset, right? Yeah. And obviously you're a very confident person. And the reason why people hold themselves back from doing anything is because they do get in that people pleasing tendency because they get their security from other people, their validation from other people. So have you always been this confident or was it something that you overcame in your life to get this confidence? Talk to me about that. So I think from an early age, I grew up with someone that struggled with addiction. So I was very like self-sufficient from an early age. And that developed into me just feeling like if I could develop resourcefulness, then I could make anything happen. And a little bit of it was like escapism from the environment that I was in to a certain degree. But also I think I've always really focused on confidence building at the forefront of everything that I'm doing. And I think, I know you and I can connect to this and a lot of listeners will also that like, for example, fitness and anything that I could do, like on a basic level of just like keeping promises to myself to believe that I'm the person that's going to follow through. And it sounds so corny. Like literally this is probably what we'll tell our our toddler about building confidence when we have a toddler (laughs) is like, I think of it like a bucket, right? Confidence. And every time that you show up and keep a promise to yourself, it's like you're putting a deposit into that bucket, plot, plot, plot. But what I, I've really noticed that's been helpful for me is, you know, we're told not to compare ourselves to other people. But what I've actually struggled with more in my life is comparing myself to a prior version of myself when the circumstances were different. So for example, at the time that we're recording this, I'm 29 weeks pregnant. What I can do now is very different than what I could do before I was pregnant. Just like when I started a brand new business and it felt like I had no idea what the hell I was doing, comparing myself to back when I was in network marketing and I had put my reps in for so long, it can be really easy to get stuck in that like, oh my gosh, there's such a distance from where I am now to where I want to go and not having the confidence. So I always have to go back to like, in this exact season of my life, like what does winning today actually look like for me? Like what are the tiny things that I can do to build confidence in this exact season, not comparing myself to a prior season? Like even you right now, like with the boys, you know, on summer, it's like what you can do in your business is going to be different than when they're all back in school again. And you know, from all of the reps of being an entrepreneur that like entrepreneurship is seasonality, but especially when you're first starting or you're like meeting that resistance for the first time as you're up leveling, you forget that. So then you beat yourself up sometimes of like, oh my gosh, I used to be able to do this amount in my business, or I used to show up in this way, but I can't do that now because I've got a toddler or I've got whatever it is that's going on. So I've been really intentional about always thinking about how can I build confidence, but in particular, how can I build confidence in this exact season? What does that criteria look like? Not a previous season. Otherwise I get in my head about it. So I've just been really intentional about that from a, like, from when I started in entrepreneurship of like, okay, this is my goal, micro focus, macro vision. Like here's where I want to go. It feels really scary to even say that out loud, but I'm really just in that micro focus as often as I can be. Yeah. Well, the quality of our life is created by the quality of our questions. So it sounds to me like you're really good at asking quality questions of yourself. And it's, that's the premise of my entire book is (laughs) about asking yourself questions and it's called, what do you really want? So it's interesting that this is coming up right now because it, it does change. Like what, what you wanted before you were a mom is drastically different than what you want as a mom. And you're starting just to think like, you know, when I have a toddler, when I have this, like everything changes yeah. and what you used to think was important might not be as important now. And that's okay. Like giving yourself that permission to, to change. It's so interesting to be talking about this right at this moment, because, you know, like, you know, I'm, we're pregnant with our first, so I'm catching myself feeling really grateful for the prior version of me who did work through all of this stuff to get mm-hmm. to this point financially and even confidence level and in my marriage to be going into this new season. But there's still this other part that's like, it's unknown. I have no idea what it's going to feel like when I have a brand new baby. I've never done this before. So I can't get too caught up in the unknown and start asking myself crappy questions. Like, how am I going to figure this out? How do other people do this? What's it going to feel like? But instead I'm like, I trust 
like in my ability to figure things out when that season comes and that trust is enough, but it's been built up from confidence being the primary focus for years and years as an entrepreneur. I'm like, mm -hmm. that does transfer into being a mom in some way. I don't know exactly how yet and I'll figure it out when I get there, but it's like, that's really helping me catch myself when I want to have those like anxiety moments of the unknown, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whatever you focus on grows, right? So if you're focused right. on, I don't know, I don't know, but, and I know you've probably heard this before, whenever the baby comes, like it's crazy. I feel like God just downloads how to do everything all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I know how to do this. I know how to change a diaper. I know how to give a baby yeah. a bath. Like it was crazy. I remember the first time Chase, um, we were, he was 21 when we had our first baby and yeah. he's like this, you know, he's like a kid himself and he's holding the baby and, you know, Cooper was seven pounds and he just was like, he knew how to do it. And I was like, I, don't break him. Cause he's so big, <laughs> but like, he was just like making it happen. I was like, how did this, like, what? Like we thought we were going to be all over the place, but it yeah. really does. Like, I feel like get downloaded into you. And so when you focus on what can I do now to get ready and it is being a confident person, it's being a healed mom, yes. right? Like doing all the work that you've done. So that way you can raise kids that don't care about what people think, you know, right. and like, I mean, they're still going to have their things, but you just raise conscious kids, you know? So it's really special. I'm so excited for you to be a mom. It's going to be amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I can't wait. You're going to be great. Wait. <laughs> so when we talk about confidence, cause I want to hit this again and just reiterate giving yourself deposits. So you yeah. follow through on your word. People, they make these big audacious goals for themselves, which I love. Like I yeah. am all about the big, yeah. huge, unapologetic ones. Yeah. But then when they don't hit it tomorrow, then they think they suck and da, 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 right. da. So it's like about making the big things, but making small promises to yourself every day. If you said you're going to get up at 6 a.m., get up at 6 a.m. Right. Don't hit the snooze and get up at 6.15 because that's breaking a promise to yourself. And then you feel like crap about yourself the rest of the day. Right. So yeah. I just want to reiterate that it's little things like that, that, you know, happen over time. That's what got Keisha to where she is today, essentially. Right. So yeah. <laughs> you talked about this really great concept and I, I need to understand how you knew how to do this because it's, it's genius. And you probably teach people now build the community first. Yeah. But how did you know, okay, I need to build the community before I sell anything. So I think like, so to your point, like I'm so with you on the fact that I want people to set like crazy big goals that they feel like they have no idea how in the world they're going to achieve it because it makes them like sweaty and have to step on, up into becoming that person that can do it. But what I've also really noticed, especially in the last few years in podcasting is like, I can set this big, crazy goal, but then I have to recognize that the distance between where I am now and where I want to go, that's like my qualification period because, you know, I've helped a lot of podcasters in this space and I was on a call with like 40 of them live. And I was like, how many of you would love to have a million downloads on your podcast this month alone? And the chat was like, yeah, Kaish, like going wild, going wild. And I was like, hold on, <laughs> please recognize that with a million downloads on your podcast this month, that's so many people that are listening into your show, which means that's also a lot of feedback, good and bad. And truly it's like, we want to be the people that can actually like sustain the goal that we have and trust that the time frame, you know, for where we are now to where we want to go, that time frame is our qualification period to teach us everything that we need to know. And so I think like early on when I started this podcast and had the intention of let me build community first, it was like, I'm okay with not knowing exactly how I'm going to get to this big vision. Like I knew I wanted to do big live events. And I was like, I had this idea of like something maybe with real estate and like retreats. And I was like, I'm just going to kind of like listen to the feedback of this because I just trusted that along the way, each of the things that I created would like lead me down the right direction. I was like, I'm just going to trust that if I have this big vision that I'm also gifted the resourcefulness to make it happen, but I just don't have to get caught up in the step-by-step -step plan. So it was honestly just like kind of like letting go of this like tight grip that we always want to have on things of like, I need to know step one, two, three, four, yeah. and five. It's like, maybe I could just get more curious about people and maybe I can just trust that, you know, all like, for example, one of the things I first started was a membership. And at first it was like 200 people for $10 a month. And then I was, and it ended up growing to like 20 something thousand dollars a month of people that were in this membership. But I was, wasn't afraid to start small because I was like, I know 
that this step is leading me in the right direction because I can course correct as I go. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when people are like, I need to have this now because we live in this instant gratification, like Amazon prime culture where we're socialized to believe that if you get it more quickly, it's better. I'm like, here's the thing. I can't handle a $20,000 a month membership when I'm brand new and I don't even know like how the hell to upload a video to like Kajabi yet. Like I can't handle that yet. Keyword yet. But as I'm iterating, I'm building up the confidence. I'm building up the coping mechanisms, the community around me, the team to support it. Like I'm doing those little steps. And I think if people were willing to trust that, like, if you've got this vision gifted on your heart, you are also gifted the resourcefulness to figure it out, but you have to continuously get out of your own damn way. And one of the ways that we're in our way is we're just wanting to get there more quickly. We're not giving ourselves the time. And like on a simple scale, I think about this even with like, say like fitness, someone's like, I want to lose 20 pounds. And they think they want to lose it tomorrow. I'm like, if you didn't learn how to fuel your body and how to sleep well and manage your stress and drink water and work out and all of this stuff, maybe you'll lose 20 pounds, but you can't sustain it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes if you can't sustain the vision that you have and it all spontaneously combusts because you haven't built up the skills to actually maintain that, then you're going to tell yourself the story that you're not capable of going to that next level. And you're not only robbing yourself of that fulfillment, but you're robbing everybody else who could be impacted as a byproduct. And so I think like intuitively, I do think I just really recognize like if I get curious about this and I make it more fun and I don't put so much freaking pressure on myself because, you know, I had that other business on the side, which I think a lot of people don't talk about is like someone listening into this podcast. If you've got this corporate job that is providing you an income and you're building something on the side right now, that corporate job is awesome to help give you some income so you can focus on like taking those tiny steps to really build it with a strong foundation, you know? Wow. I love, I love that perspective. 